Alright, how's it guys? This is Mark and welcome back to this new tutorial. In this tutorial series, we break down these two shots and how we did them. In the previous part, we created the forest fire environment and in this part, which is part two, we're going to add the helicopter to the forest fire shot. And actually there is a tutorial which was never released. Uh, here's some of the test shots we did. So I thought it'd be cool to also include a short bonus tutorial um, showcasing how to add the helicopter to a live action play. So I came to this uh, car park where we could shoot some live action play. And don't worry about uh, capturing any HDRM maps because we're just going to be using our phones to capture a panorama which we can use to reference the lighting from. All right, let's start setting up the helicopter in Element 3D. Firstly, this is the 3D model I'll be using. I bought this on Turbo Squid for about $50, but at the time of recording this video, it's about 40 bucks. Okay, so before we import the 3D model into Element 3D, we need to separate a few things. I separated the main screw and the helper screw in Cinema 4D, but you can do that in any software such as Blender for example. I'll show you in Cinema 4D. So the way Element 3D works with materials and objects is that whatever material is assigned to whichever parts of the 3D model, it kind of groups them together. And if you turn off the material, it will hide all of the objects which has that material assigned to. So as you can see, in Cinema 4D, all of the objects are separated, but because the main screw and the helper screw has the same material as some of the other objects, Element 3D would group them together. I'm going to just combine these objects within Cinema 4D as we don't necessarily need them separate. To do this, just simply select all of the objects, right click on one of them and select Connect Objects and Delete. So let's find which material is assigned to the screws. For the main screw, it's set 4. So I'm going to simply duplicate this material, rename it to set4 underscore main screw, and assign it to the object. Then, we also need to do this with the helper screw. This object has set3 assigned to it. So let's duplicate that, rename it to set3 underscore helper screw, then just simply swap out the material on the object. If you wanted to have the Cinema 4D project file and Element 3D linked, meaning whatever you change in Cinema 4D, would also change in Element 3D, then you need to import this Cinema 4D file. I'm going to do that. But if you're using Blender, for example, then you need to export an OBJ file and import that. Okay, let's go back to After Effects. Let's create a new comp. I named it helicopter underscore element 3D. Then create a new solid and call it whatever you'd like. Then add Element 3D, then click on Scene Setup. So let's import the 3D model into Element 3D. Let's import all of the textures for the appropriate materials. After adding all of the textures, I reduced the glossiness to 85%, reduced the environment multiplier to 20% and increased the reflectivity to 25%. Make sure you do this for all of the materials. For the windows, I'm going to use the glass material from the presets. Decrease the reflectivity to 5%, then go to advanced settings and reduce the force opacity to 35%. I actually did not like how the metallic map made the helicopter look, so I turned that off in all of the materials. This gives us a much more reflective surface which I think is more fitting. I also added a grunge texture to the glossiness and increased the contrast like this. I then copied this texture and pasted it into all of the other materials. Then go to the first material and then go to advanced and check on draw back phases in the bottom. Do the same for the rest. Now duplicate the group. Hide all of the materials apart from the main screw then change the group number to 2. Duplicate the group again, hide the main screw material and turn the helper screw back on. Then change the group number to 3. Then press OK to leave element 3D. So this isn't really the best option, but it's a quick method to match your 3D object with your environment. I rendered one frame from the forest fire comp that we did previously, and then go back to element 3D and open the environment settings. Then simply import the image as the environment. I changed the exposure slightly as well as the brightness just to further match the forest fire shot. And once again press OK to leave element 3D. Then open group 1, then group utilities, then create group null and then click on create. Then open group 2 and turn it on. Go down to multi object and open the up and also enable it. Then go to rotation and click on the stopwatch for the y axis. Then go to the end of the timeline and increase it to about 15 full 360s. Then open group 3 and turn it on. Go down to multi object again and open that up and also enable it. And again go to rotation and click on the stopwatch for the y axis. Go to the end of the timeline and increase it to about 15 full 360s. 
I'm going to quickly rename these null objects. The first one to be body, the second one main screw and the last one helper screw. Select the two top null layers and parent them to the body layer. Alright, let's work on the render settings. Open physical environment and increase the exposure to 1.5. Then go to lighting, then additional lighting and reduce the brightness multiplier to 0%. Then go down to the ambient occlusion and enable it. It's also time to create our camera. I want to make sure how this helicopter is filmed is similar to how the forest fire would be shot. So let's change the focal length to 150, then press OK. Basically, just move it onto one of the side and make sure its distance matches the forest fire from the camera. Alright, then let's animate the helicopter. Select the body layer and press P. Click on the stopwatch and go to the end of the timeline. Then move the helicopter from left to the right. I animated it all the way out of the frame. Then press R. Hold down ALT and click on the stopwatch for the X rotation. Then type wiggle in bracket 0.6 comma 10 end bracket. Then again hold down ALT and click on the stopwatch for the Y rotation. Then type the same wiggle in bracket 0.6 comma 10 end bracket. And our helicopter is all set up for the forest fire shot. Alright, so before we move on to adding the helicopter to the forest fire shot, let's add it to the live action play that we mentioned in the beginning of this video. So I chose this uh, car park location because there's a lot of concrete and actual place for the helicopter to land on. But we're going to upload this uh, live action plate and you can download it to follow along if you'd like. And quickly, I just wanted to mention Visual Effects Pro. If you're looking for any stock footage for Visual Effects, then please do check out visualfxpro.com, where you can find all of our collections, including fire, explosions, smoke, weather, blood. All right, let's work on the live action plate. All right, so here's the live action plate. Firstly, I'm going to track the movement in the footage. The clip was filmed with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, so I'm going to pre-comp it. Then go into the pre-comp. I'm going to add a LUT, which is a LUT from this website called Battery LUT. And it's specifically for this camera, but you can use any other LUT or just simply grade it with Lumetri Color. Anyways, with the LUT applied to the footage, I'm going to go back to the main comp, select the pre-comp layer and click on track motion in the tracker window. I'm going to highlight the area where the helicopter is going to be, then press track forward. Once completely tracked, I'm going to go back to the comp and create a new null. Let's rename it to scene track number one. Go back to layer where the tracking is taking place. Click on edit target and select the scene track null. Then simply click apply, then OK. I'm going to go back to the pre-comp and turn off the LUT. Then I'm going to copy and paste the element 3D and null layers from the other comp we just worked on. Get rid of the helicopter's movement by removing the keyframes for the position. Let's reset the position. I'm also going to remove the expression for the rotations, as well as reset the orientation. I filmed this clip with a 24mm lens on a Super 35 sensor, which means it's more like a 35mm focal length. So select the camera and go to Layer, Camera Settings and change the focal length to 35. I'm going to reposition the camera so the helicopter is on the ground. As the helicopter is all set up in the Element 3D layer, we just need to change a few things. I also increased the scale in the null for the body to 135. Then we need to change the environment map. So as I said earlier in the video, I captured an image with my phone as I did not have my 360 camera with me. So what I can do is create a new comp, just call it environment, change the resolution to the following, bring in that panorama image and hold down Ctrl, Alt and F, which will fit its scale to the resolution we have in this comp. This does not have the same exposure data as a HDR map. However, this does work fairly well as a last resort in case you forgot to take a HDR map. It also works very well for reflections. Because I took this image right after I filmed the plate, the exposure of the image and the footage matches, which is why it's usable. So I rendered this as a JPEG. Then go to the Element 3D layer and click on Scene Setup. Change the environment to this map. Then let's create a new group. Create a plane and scale it up quite a bit. Then go to Presets, Materials, Physical and change its material to Matte Shadow. This will give us ambient occlusion on the ground. Then make sure to change the group number to 4. Then go to Group 4, Group Utilities, Create Group Null and click on Create. Then using the null, position it beneath the helicopter. Now let's work on the animation. I want it to slowly start taking off. I left the keyframes for the screws. So let's only focus on the body null. Press P and click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Then go to the end and move the helicopter upwards. Then right click on the first keyframe in the beginning and go to the keyframe assistant and select Easy Ease Out. This means that the helicopter will slowly start to rise rather than rising at a linear speed. 
Alright, now with the null layer selected, add the slider control, duplicate it, rename the first one to be amount and the second to be speed, then press R, which brings up the orientation. Hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch, then type wiggle in bracket speed, comma amount and bracket. Make sure to name it exactly what you named your sliders, including capital letters. Then go to the beginning of it and press enter. Then type amount equals and pick whip the first slider which is the amount. Add the semicolon at the end. Then press enter again. Type speed equals then pick whip the second slider and add a semicolon to the end. There's an amazing tutorial which will explain this wiggle expression further. It's where I first saw it as well. Then I went forward around 4 frames. Add keyframes to both sliders. Go further in the timeline. Change the amount to 2 and the speed to 0.2. This is going to give a slight wiggle as it's rising from the ground. Alright. Now we need to color correct the helicopter layer to match with the background. So add a brightness and contrast effect. Select use legacy and decrease the contrast to minus 20. Then add a hue and saturation effect. Reduce the saturation to minus 30. Then add a curves effect and just slightly increase the exposure with these two points. I added a match grain effect and selected the source layer to be the footage. This matches the noise from the footage to the helicopter. Then I added a new adjustment layer and used the basic camera shape preset which you can download from our website. These are the values I used. Lastly, create one more adjustment layer and apply the same lot or grade you'd like. I also added a hue and saturation effect and reduced the saturation to minus 10. I also want to quickly mention that I made the same scene in Cinema 4D and rendered it with Redshift and this is the result of that. I'll make a comparison and upload that shortly as well. But here's a quick sneak peek. Anyway, let's add the helicopter to the forest fire shot. It's not going to take long at all now because it's all set up. Alright, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, now let's go back to the forest fire comp. Let's bring in the Element 3D comp we were working on and straight away let's pre-comp it. Then copy smoke number 6 and paste it into the pre-comp. Then pick whip the track mat to the smoke layer and use luma mat and also click inverted. Then go back to the main layer. Using the track mat again, pick whip the foreground trees layer and make sure to use alpha mat with inverted. And that's actually the first shot completed. Thank you very much for watching part 2. Subscribe to see part 3 and all of our future tutorials. And also, if you'd like, share this video to help us reach more people. Thank you very much. Bye.